What is up everyone? This is Lammernan once again, and today I'm going to talk about another often talked about mod when it comes to comes to Pokemon that people hate dealing with, and it will be Celesteela. Who else? Now, funnily enough, Celesteela is actually Yu-Yu this gen, as you can clearly see. But that doesn't change the amount of hate and vitriol spat at it. Um, when it was actually OU last gen, and it still gets a lot of hate to this day, but not as much because, you know, it pretty much got replaced by Core of Night and Skarmory in a OU, but even in Monotype and in general tiers, Cell Steel has always just been a really obnoxious Pokemon. But why is that? So first of all, let's look at Cell Steel itself. It's got really uh, spread out stats, and compared to like Skarmory or even Corviknight, Skarmory has is one of the best physically bulky Pokemon in the game. We all know that. It has 140 base defense, but it's weaker in special defense. It doesn't have a ton of HP, despite being a ball. Uh, Corviknight. Corviknight has a little bit more of an even spread and also has more HP than Skarmory. I'm pretty sure Skarmory is still more physically bulky, but Corviknight has better stat better stats across the board as a defensive Pokemon and also has pressure. So comparing Cell Steel to these two, it seems pretty clear why this gen at least it got replaced because before, Cell Steel's little niche was that it could be a good specially defensive wall, or we can just look at the uh, OU analysis for this thing right now in Gen 7. It definitely was used both specially defensively and physically defensively. I know that for sure. But uh, once we get this thing loaded, take a look at the Sun and Moon analysis for it. And yeah, as you can see, it's still especially defensive in UU. Not a big surprise. Especially since I'm pretty sure Skarmory used to be in UU as well. Or is it still in UU? I actually don't know. I haven't been keeping track on Skarmory. I know it did drop to UU at one point though. May have gone back up though, who knows. But yeah, this is taking a while to load for some reason, so... Uh, we'll just uh, ignore that for now. But yeah, just know that even in UU, in this current gen, it's still used especially defensively. And because because it used to do that in SM as well, or Sun and Moon, uh, Corviknight kind of outclassed it because it obviously has one thing that Cell Steel does not have, and that is reliable recovery in Roost. And Roost is an incredibly good move for a fat wall to have because it gives you back 50% of your HP and also helps a lot with your weaknesses to flying type moves. I mean, to flying weak moves like uh, Thunderbolt and stuff like that. Uh, so Cell Steel doesn't have access to this move. Instead, it has access to a more uh, unique move, which is Leech Seed. And Leech Seed while at first it might seem like, oh, this is a horrible gimmick, how can how can you make a wall with Leech Seed and no reliable recovery? Well, if you pair Leech Seed with Protect, suddenly it becomes a little bit harder to deal with for a lot of people. I may be wondering, oh, well, this set is clearly too passive. There's no way Cell Steel is going to be able to pull this off. Well, that's where Heavy Slam comes in. And Cell Steel is one of the heaviest Pokemon in the game. It's nine. I'm not gonna look it up for you. It's literally 999.9 kilograms, which is absurd. It's literally heavier than Primal Groudon. I don't understand, but yeah. Um, Cell Steel is one of the heaviest Pokemon in the game, so it pretty much has a consistent uh, 120 base power uh, Steel move to just throw out. That's 100% accurate, and also has a decent amount of PP. It's like 16. Uh, not super spammable, but still relatively decent and can get the job done. It's very good versus the new Omnipresent Fairy types, and just a generally, Steel generally is just a good spammable uh, stab move, because there's not like a ton of resistances besides water types, and the very rare electric type, but you're not staying in on those anyway, so. But yeah, uh, Cell Steel, these three moves uh, allow Cell Steel to do a lot of things, but even if we look back at a uh, 
uh, now the SM analysis is back up, but yeah, as you can see, it was used especially defensively in OU, mainly because obviously Skarmory is better physically defensively because, yeah, it's Skarmory and it has Roost. But yeah, as you can see here, it uses these three moves as well as Flamethrower to help deal with opposing steel types like Ferrothor. And the reason I'm talking about this is because. I just want to make it clear that I think Cell Steel has a very unique wall identity in this game. And I know a lot of people hate this mod and they want to see it gone, and they hate it because it's an ultra beast and it's legendary and all that nonsense, but as we can clearly see from Gen 8, it really wasn't super fantastic, as everyone makes it, make, made it seem to be. It really just, it was, I mean, it's still good. It's a good Pokemon, we all know that, but it's not like this godlike Pokemon that needs to get banned. I really don't think it was ever like that, actually. Cell Steel is actually, to be honest with you, I I know I'm probably going to get a lot of flame for this, but I think it's probably one of the more balanced walls of uh, that Gen 7 introduced. I still think Toxapex is really dumb, but Cell Steel feels a lot more unique and balanced as a wall, in my opinion. Because instead of giving it Roost, they gave they made a they made its reliable recovery leech seed and they made it more unique as compared to Skarmory and Corviknight. And obviously Cell Steel has its also another unique thing, which is Beast Boost, which it which with this stat spread in particular, which is why I really like this mod, you can basically customize which stat you want to increase. So you can do uh, you can increase special defense if you want, you can increase physical defense if you want, if you get a kill. And it makes it harder to kill you. Um yeah, if this thing had Roost, it would absolutely be bonkers, super good, and I'd also probably want it banned, but it does not have it because, obviously, it would just be too good with it, and also, it just it can just do too much at once. Because another problem that people have with Cell Steel is that you don't know which set it's going to be, because Cell Steel can run offensive sets. I don't think they're that po popular in OU, but I know Monotype, they're... they're sort of common still not super common but they're definitely a thing and people really don't like the fact that cell steel can run both offensive and defensive sets because it makes it hard to check the pokemon consistently because some offensive sets might beat certain walls and some defensive sets just you know wall people <laughs> that would try to check the offensive sets so yeah it's kind of a tough slope, but I generally feel like Cell Steel is definitely manageable, and it's definitely not a super cancer mod. It's good, but it's not super good. But I definitely do think that giving it this kind of stat spread was kind of a little annoying, because it, it just allows it to do way too much at once. But to be honest with you, it's really not that bad. It, it, it's a little annoying, but it's not that bad. Because compared to like Toxapex, I'm not even going to look that mana because you already know with like 140 and 152 defensive stats, it's ridiculous how good Toxapex is, uh, how good defensively it is, and how it just has everything. Cell Steel, on the other hand, while it is a Steel Flying type, and Steel Flying is obviously a tried and true, really good defensive typing, it's not super. It still has its glaring weaknesses. It's a Steel type, so it's weak to Magnet Zone, obviously. It doesn't have reliable recovery, so if it gets chipped down consistently, it will die eventually, unlike Toxapex. And it also doesn't have Regenerator, so it can't just switch out every single time and then, like, not get Rocks chip on it consistently. And it can't even run Heavy Duty Boots, because 12% chip is just not worth losing leftovers over, especially since you don't have any reliable recovery, like most mods that use Boots like Slowbro and uh, Blissey, so Cell Steel is just one of those Pokemon that really got hurt this gen, especially with the addition of Boots, because now you can just run other defensive Pokemon with Boots and you don't really need Cell Steel, a mod with like no consistent recovery to do it. But the thing that makes Cell Steel, I feel, one of the more balanced and one of my, not one of my favorite mods, but definitely one of the mods that I think are definitely overhated and it really is a more unique take on a defensive pokemon because cell steel just leech seeds their opponent and they wear them down consistently now i know other pokemon have done this in the past i'm pretty sure uh i'm not sure if it was parasect or someone else basically spammed a leech seed all the time i know berloom did it before 
was Toxic Lord. Back in like Gen 3 or Gen 4 or something. I think it was probably both of them. But yeah, I know Berloom did that for a while. It did Leech Seed Spam with a Focus Punch, I believe. And I think it also used Spore with it as well. But yeah, essentially Berloom also did Leech Seed Spam. But Berloom also had somewhat more consistent recovery with Toxic Orb and Poison Heal, which basically allowed him to get like almost 24% of his health back in one turn, which is kind of ridiculous. And so still it can only get 18, and it's still affected by rocks and takes 12% compared to Berlin's 6%, so yeah. Um, Celesteela kind of <laughs> kind of has it tough. Also, uh, Berlin doesn't care about getting its item knocked off if it already activated Toxic. So that's another thing. Celesteel is also extremely prone to knock off, and if it gets its leftovers knocked off, it just kind of sits there, and you have to position really well with it. But yeah, that's what you should be doing with a wall. You have to position your walls properly, and you shouldn't just be throwing them into super powerful attacks and then switching them out, and then they get their health back. Like, <clears throat> Toxapex. So, I feel like Celesteel definitely is one of the better mods. It is really annoying to deal with if you're an offensive player, and you're just like throwing moves out there and trying to sweep Pokemon as fast as you can, and then this big old wall of no, no emotion just comes in, leech seeds, protects, and just gets like, what, like 24% of its health back, and then does the same thing again, and then hits you with a heavy slam, and then can switch to a teammate who can also get healed from the uh, leech seed, which is probably the most annoying part about uh, leech seed support, but hey, it's a more unique take on the wall, and I really, really, really like it. I wish Game Freak would make more walls like this, to be honest with you. Obviously not like the same thing where they can be both offensive and defensive. That's kind of annoying, admittedly. But, and it, in OU, it's not, it's, I don't really think it's been used offensively, at least not really commonly, because I don't even see an offensive set on the analysis for this thing. I think it's literally just... It's literally just a defensive set, yeah. There's no offensive set for OU, at least last gen. I don't know about this gen and Yu Yu. Possible you could probably be running offensive because obviously it's dire right now because it's in Yu Yu in the first place. But yeah, so Steel is just it's a good it's a good mod. It's a well it's a decently designed mod. I'm not gonna say it's like one of the best des designed mods, but I definitely like its glaring flaw being that it doesn't have consistent recovery. How it forces you to actually play well with the Pokemon. Now, understandably, people really hate uh, uninteractive mods, because, yeah, you can't really interact that much with Celesteel. It just literally clicks Protect and Leech Seed. It just clicks those two moves, and then sometimes clicks Heavy Slam. It's not super interactive, but the amount of positioning it requires you to do, and the amount of thought that you have to take into account with it when you're team building is, like... I definitely think it's... Uh, really well designed wall and it's definitely one of the b best gen 7 walls that they offered i don't think it's it would it would be too strong without z moves personally maybe in monotype it'd be a little bit too strong without z moves but i definitely do think that in ou it definitely was still fine without z moves potentially because there's still a lot of fire types strong fire types at least i think yeah no vulgar run is limited here so there's strong fire types, there's also strong uh, electric, electric type attacks, strong special attackers, strong physical attackers that can just take Celesteela out with their coverage, or even their neutral moves. And like I said, Celesteela doesn't have regenerator or consistent recovery, so it's not really that annoying to deal with if you play around it properly. You just can't click moves against it and then expect it to work. And that's how a wall should be. It should be able to stop brain dead attacks from just beating you outright and punish super offensive like careless play that's what a wall should do it should force you to strategize and like learn how to build around defensive defensive play and help you build your team around that that's the goal of a defensive pokemon at least in my opinion that's what a defensive pokemon is supposed to do it's supposed to for it's supposed to stop uh the opponent from just sweeping you and it's supposed to make you think about what you want to do to beat defensive play because if Pokemon was just a game of just throwing out uh, your most powerful Pokemon, just setting up in front of them, and then like fierce double switches between sometimes immunities, uh, it wouldn't really be as entertaining and interesting of a game as it is now. 
well, it's not super entertaining or interesting now, especially with Dynamax being banned and a com competitive community essentially being split in two. But yeah, I do think that Cell Steel is definitely one of the better mons to come out of Gen 7, one of the better walls. I know people really hate this mon, but I really cannot understate how much I think this mon is really unique, and I think it's really, it was, re it was a really good addition to the game, in my opinion. Now, unfortunately, it's ouch, it, it got overshadowed by Corviknight and Skarmory this gen. But when it came out in Gen 7, I definitely do think it was one of the more unique and uh, really pleasant mons to come into the scene. I really do enjoy enjoy his presence. In Monotype, it, it's extremely AIDS, obviously. But I think as a general Pokemon, I like the addition of Celesteela quite a bit. But yeah, that's all I have to say about this mon. Um... If you liked my little rant about Celesteela, uh, feel free to subscribe, do whatever you will, and have a great day.